Volatile markets can be particularly tricky to trade, and whilst they offer great potential for large gains, these often come at a great risk and with greater potential for larger losses. Now, each week we're looking at ways to help make volatility in the markets work for you. This week we're going to start by looking at leverage. Now, this is just a very quick touch on leverage. Please, there is plenty more information regarding leverage on our website. But basically, leverage enables you to trade a much larger position with a greater exposure to the markets than the funds that you have deposited on the account. Now, this has, brings with it the benefit of magnified profits. And this is because the profits are calculated using the full value of the position. The disadvantage to this is also that losses are also magnified. As with profits, they are calculated using the full value of the trade. And given that the deposit is often comparatively small, it can be easy to forget how much you're risking. So in volatile markets, this becomes a problem because the daily traded range can be much greater and a position can quickly move against you. You could find yourself in danger of having your position closed out automatically. So what do you need to do in order to prevent yourself from ending up in this position? And here we're going to look at risk management. Again, risk management in trading is a huge topic, but we're just going to touch on one part of it, which is to do with position sizing. Now, if a position is an appropriate size compared to the to, compared to the capital available on the account, the margin closeout then shouldn't really be an issue, even in volatile markets. So position size planning helps to control risk. If we were going to take a rule of thumb, retail investors should not risk more than around 2% of their investment capital per trade. So just to quickly run you through an example, if an account has £25,000 on it and you're looking to set the risk there at 2%, then each trade you should be risking 500 pounds. This might seem small, but then even if you lose 10 trades, you've still only lost 20% of the account rather than blowing it up completely. Also, it's worth bearing in mind that it's easier to control your mindset on smaller trades. Once you've decided on that, that, that risk uh, percentage, the next thing you need to decide is where your stop loss should be placed. So if you know that you're looking to risk £500 per trade, then you can decide to put your stop loss, say, 50p away, and then you know that your trade position size should be £10 a point. Do please, as I said, check on our website for further information. For more videos in this series, please join us next week.